Hi, my name is Sydney Kochelmeyer, and I'm doing um, REBT and, and the technique of challenging uh, irrational beliefs. So, hello. Um, what brought you in here today? Um, I'm having some marital problems. I'm experiencing a lot of physical abuse in our marriage, and I'm trying hardest to work on me and figure out what I'm doing wrong, what can I do better so that the abuse can stop. And how long have you um, been married to your husband? Um, we've been married for about six, seven months now, so it's pretty recent, but it just started. That's so, true. Yeah, the physical abuse just started? Yes. When we were dating, we never had any problems. Everything was fine. He never put a hand on me. Now, mm -hmm. for the past two, three months, it's something that's triggered. Mm -hmm. So I heard you say that you You were the reason um, for the physical abuse. You messed up. Um, so you people believe that you messed up, so the punishment is physical abuse. Yes. Okay. Um, have you ever thought of another um, way your husband could express anger besides being abused? Do you think um, this is the appropriate reaction? No. I think. Um, that it has to be me. I mean, he never, we never had a problem like this before, so if I'm messing up, I want to know what I'm doing so that we can fix our marriage, so. Um, have you ever thought that it could be him? Uh, he's struggling with something? He's messing up? Um, no, I feel like if he was struggling with something, he would tell me, so that's why I'm kind of pinpointing the finger at myself. So every time I mess up or if I do something wrong in his eyes, then I should be punished for it. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like there's another way he could show his dissatisfaction with something you did? Is, do you think? Um, I'm sure there are other ways, mm -hmm. but I just don't know if he can express them in any other way. So I hear you saying that um, you hold this belief, this life philosophy, that you are the reason why um, your husband is physically abusing you with stuff that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to challenge that and say that um, maybe it's not, maybe it's maybe it's him, maybe um, um, you don't deserve physical punishment for for, for anything. So um, I really like to work on challenging that notion in your head that you deserve physical punishment because um, I feel like that um, no one deserves that and you um, can do better um, and then thinking that so then how would we start it just think of alternate ways other than abuse that um yeah that might be somewhere to start um I would first start by just changing your thinking process um of the abuse, um, changing that the thought of you deserve um, physical abuse because you don't. Um, I think that is a privilege to start that you need to realize that that is not okay and that is, um, that is a belief I think we need to challenge in our sessions as well. Okay. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Sydney Koppelmeyer and I'm doing um, feminist theory and just some, uh, the technique I'm using is just some um, information about uh, societal uh, norms. So hi, what brought you in here today? Um, I'm having some issues at work. Um, I've been noticing my boss is, I think I'm being sexually harassed by my boss, let's just say that. Mm -hmm. um, just, I just notice a lot of things. Um, he may make certain comments or just the way that he looks at me makes me just feel really uncomfortable. Um, I have talked to some of my coworkers about it and they seem to think that the way I dress may have a lot to do with the attention that I'm attracting to my boss, um, dressing a little provocatively. So I've been trying to alter that 
but um, I'm just not feeling comfortable at work. I don't really know what else I can do. So what is he doing that makes you feel like it's sexual? Um, it could be a, a simple, gentle touch. It just, um, it's just weird because you're my boss and you shouldn't be touching me. The looks, um, certain comments, like I just don't think it's professional in a workplace. So I just feel really, really bothered. And because he's my boss, it's, well, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. I think that what you're bringing up is all really valid in your um, opinions and feelings about this should definitely be validated. Mm -hmm. um, because it does sound like you're experiencing some um, elements of sexual harassment. And if it's okay with you, I'd just like to um, inform you on um, our society and how um, uh, just sexual assault, typically with women, um, what that looks like in our society, if that would be okay with Yes. So um, here's some paperwork. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that's just going to let you know just the basic statistic that one in four women are sexually assaulted in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, definitely something that's very common in our society. Um, it looks like you're experiencing it. Um, so I just think there's comfort in knowing that other people have experienced what you've experienced. Um, and you'll also find some ways to address sexual harassment in the workplace on that um, piece of paper. And I'd also like to note that you mentioned um, that your coworkers were commenting that you were dressing a certain way to entice your coworker. Um, do you feel that you were doing this? No, and not at all. Um, right. Um, so that's another thing we experience in our society called victim blaming. Mm -hmm. um, one of the more common um, elements of victim blaming is um, blaming typically the woman what she was wearing that she was asking for, if it was tight or short, whatever she was wearing, um, that she was asking to be sexually assaulted, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important to note in your instance, um, just because uh, that, that is, that looks, it looks like that's what is happening to you, that you were being blamed. Um, and I would just encourage you next session to read over the handouts I've given you about society and we can discuss how to go from there and how to address um, your boss's behaviors. Um, I would definitely, um, I definitely think you should address either him or to a, um, to the appropriate person in your workplace uh, about sexual assault and sexual harassment. How do I go about going to the proper authorities if it's only it only happens when me and him are together? Like mm -hmm. both our jobs are at stake, so it's kind of my word against his. Mm -hmm. And my coworkers are blaming me because it's the way I dress. So, well, I definitely want you to understand that um, it's not the way you dress; it's um, your boss's behaving inappropriately. Mm -hmm. um, he should he should be aware of that. Um, and there's always something I'm sure there's someone in your department who deals with um, issues like sexual harassment. I think that would definitely be available if you ask. I mean, you probably are unaware of it because you may not have asked yet. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe it's important to feel around there and we can go from there in our next session what to do next. That okay, sounds good. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sydney Koppelmeyer, and I'm going to do reality therapy, the technique of WDEP. Okay, so um, what brings you into therapy today? Hello, I'm Sydney. <laughs> um, one of the things that brought me in today is I have realized that I am intaking more alcohol than I should be, and I'm noticing that I am not as involved with my family as I would like to be, and this alcohol is very addicting and it's overcoming who I am as a person and I want to be able to build that family bond as well as be a good mother to my kids. Okay. Um, what do you want instead of this problem that you say um, you're having with alcohol? Instead of the alcohol, I just I want to have that family bond, but for some reason the alcohol is my coping. 
so I know I've been doing a lot of work and I've been stressed a lot lately and I think the whole stress and working could have a lot to do with my drinking. So what are you doing? What are you, what are your actions? What are you thinking? Um, what are you feeling um, about um, this issue that you say you're having with alcohol and your family connection? Um, it's a lot of mixed emotions. I feel depressed at one moment and then the depression comes after I realize the harm that I'm doing to my family. And then with all my busy schedule and working so hard trying to be a good mother, it's just I turn to alcohol because that's like, okay, well now I can relax. This is my time. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be able to cope and do something else instead of the alcohol. So is um, this drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, is that helping you get what you want with a better family connection? I feel, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes me feel good for that moment because it's like I'm in my own place, but then I look at the long-term effect that it has on my family and my health as well. Um, so what are you prepared to do? Or to think differently that you will take um, you in the direction you want to go? Um, what are the steps you want to take? I think one of the steps I should take is going to AA meetings. Um, just having that support group to help me get through the transitioning that I'm going through. Um, I also think that talking to my family, other family members, just to actually encourage me and be there for me just so I can take the steps that I need to, to be a good mother. Mm -hmm. So how will you know when, once you've achieved this goal that, um, you've, that you've achieved everything you've just said? I know how I feel when I'm drinking and I know when I'm sober, I know that feeling of happiness being with my kids. So when I have that feeling of not wanting